Hey guys, the video you're about to watch is my very first ever vlog I've ever made. And it's like uh, 2017, I was about a year into the Fighter and the Kid as a producer. And uh, it was a Fighter and the Kid live show in San Francisco. And Jobo was there too, so I visited her and I did my very first vlog in San Francisco at the Fighter and the Kid show. So, hope you guys enjoy. This is from the archives. Um, and it, to be honest, I think it did pretty damn good for my very first ever vlog. Uh, enjoy that and also, just a quick reminder, my sponsor, Into the AM, they're having a 40 to 90% off sale from now till December 5th, and 10% off that, an additional 10% off that if you use my code, intotheam.com slash chin. I'll leave a link below. I mean, that's a crazy deal. 40 to 90% off everything, and on top of that, an additional 10% off with my code, intotheam.com slash chin. Get shopping, watch the video, enjoy. Thank you so much for all your support. You guys are the best. Wait, one more thing. In my last video, I gave uh, two $100 gift certificates to Into the AM. So I felt like, why not do the same thing for this video? So all you gotta do is just comment whatever you want below, and I'll pick two different people, and I'll give you both 100 bucks and Into the AM clothing, or Into the AM gift cards, so you can buy whatever you want. That's my thank you to you guys. Now, enjoy the video. What's up, dude? How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, it's just the three of us. Right. You want to sit in front, Tim? Sure. Yeah. All right, let's get going, guys. Um, just want to say thanks to, to everybody who's here today. Um, special guests, Brendan Schaub. Um, thanks for, for making time to come down here to GoPro today. Uh, round of applause. Woo! All right. <laughs> I also want to say thanks to Boaz for setting this up. This is 100% uh, Boaz's uh, initiative, initiative and um, reaching out to, to Brennan and make it happen. So thanks to Boaz and the people team for hosting us today. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Boaz to, to lay the framework for today, and we'll get the go discussion going. Cool. So thank you, guys. I'll give you another second or two to grab a coffee. So, I asked Brendan to join us really to speak to the nature of career development, right? No two paths are the same, and Brendan's path is very, very unique. Um, and I think his experiences can speak to um, all of us um, and, and really not just inspire us, but kind of help uh, reinsure and give us confidence uh, in the workplace and in our careers. Well, first of all, thanks for having me, guys. This is pretty cool. I feel like Tony Robbins with this fucking mic right now. <laughs> I've never seen one of these besides his special. It's <laughs> pretty cool. Um, with, with our team, like we have a strong unit, man. I know we might take some criticism with it going, like get rough, but no one's gonna quit, you know. So it, it, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Yeah. So my partner, for those of you that don't know the show, Brian Callen, he's an actor, comedian. He's 50 years old, and um, you know, he's been in The Hangover, he's been in Entourage, he's been in all these things, he's one of the best comics in the world. Uh, he's been all over. Yeah. Matt TV, his Matt huge Matt TV, yeah, he just did, uh, I think, Ride Along or something like that. He's on the Goldbergs, he's the gym coach on the Goldbergs. I don't know, some white people <laughs> shit. He's on that, all right? He's on that. But uh, I, I moved to, uh, when I first moved to LA, I didn't have anyone's number, I only had Brian's number in my cell phone, because I met him on a TV show. And I remember driving to LA, so I took a risk because I was on a losing streak in Denver. So I packed, I sold everything, moved to LA. Brian was the only number I had in my phone. I get emotional talking about it. And uh, he, he was my only friend. And my entire life, I wanted to be like a comedian actor. Listen, this is, this is what we're here yeah. for because I want everybody to understand this. This is. This is a heavyweight contender in the UFC. This, this doesn't get any tougher than this. I'll cry whatever now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this I'll, I'll beat you up in the back <laughs> after I cry. That's why I'm allowed to cry. Hold on a second now. Uh, just get right outside his reach. Yeah. Um, you know, this, is, this is real shit. No, it means yeah. a lot to me, yeah. Because my entire life I want to be like this actor, comedian, but I had no outlet. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And Brian gives me that pass because he's a silly dude and he's been through so many ups and downs. And when we met, it was the perfect connection. I was getting punched in the face for a living. It's not good. That, that, that story doesn't end well for anybody. I don't care who you are. 
And I knew that, and I was, I, I, I uh, won a fight, lost a fight, won a fight, and I fought the number three guy in the world, and I, uh, yeah, I lost that fight. And uh, Brian was just like, will you please focus on comedy and shows and podcasts? And I'm telling you, you can do it. And I just needed that kind of push because I was like, I guess I'll lose this next fight. I can keep fighting, be just a guy, make decent money. And then I guess open a fucking cardio kickboxing school. Like now's this end. I don't, I don't know what to do. That Tybo like. Yeah, like Tybo. Like I'll just end, open a boxing gym in Brentwood and like teach soccer moms. Like that sounds miserable. But uh, Brian gave gave me the, gave me that outlet. So uh, when I'm with Brian, I, I get I get that pass because I have those labels where I'm a fighter. I'm this intense guy, and I'm not. I couldn't be anything further from that. I'm not an aggressive guy. Not a mean guy. My biggest problem in fighting was I never wanted to hurt anyone, which is a huge issue when you're fighting someone. <laughs> uh, so my, my, my chemistry with Brian, like he just gave me kind of that pass, that encouragement. He's, like I said, he's 50, and Brian's had so many ups and downs in the entertainment, and he has so much talent, but Brian, he'll tell you this, he ha had a discipline problem as far as business. Uh, well, the family I come from, my dad's very business savvy, self-made, a strict, strict dude, so is my brother. So I have that instilled in me, being an athlete. So Brian and I link it up together. The holes that he had, I would fill. The holes that I had, Brian would fill. So together, it was this, this weird chemistry where uh, I would hold Brian accountable, he'd hold me accountable, and we just played off each other. And uh, yeah, we, we, I, for whatever weird reason, this 50-year-old saved my life and I saved his life. Because as, a, as somebody who listens to your podcast, I probably have a, a little bit more information. But um, Chin, the yeah. addition of Chin, um, that spoke to me too. So Chin works on the production side of your show. And you spoke about this. And I kind of want you to maybe tell a little bit of how Chin was able to secure himself a, an opportunity yeah. with the fighter and the kid. Because yeah. it's an important one for us to Super hear. Super important. So, so uh, Chin, he's in, our, in the back. He's our producer, our new producer. And so the producer, it's, it's an important role, man. Current events, uh, editing, all the show, the sound, the studio. He told me what gear he wanted. He could basically build his perfect studio. But when we decided to leave Fox, we had to make up and find a new producer. So we blasted out on the show, hey, we're looking for a new producer. And we got thousands of emails, thousands of resumes, and you know, I don't know, I don't work for MTV, I don't know for a you know, good producer. So me and my brother would go through and we'd look at them, and they all looked good, and some were awful, but still, a lot of them were good. And I was stressed out, I'm like, I don't know how we're gonna pick someone, man. You need a recruiter. Switch me. Yeah, recruiter, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, I was doing a set at the Laugh Factory. It was a sold out show. And I get off stage and I'm taking pictures with people. And this giant Korean man, the biggest Korean I've ever seen, <laughs> walks up. And I'm like, what's up, man? Want a picture? And he's like, no, no, I don't want a picture. And he takes off uh, his necklace. And he has a, a necklace and has a USB cord attached to it. And I go, what's this? And he goes, just put it in your laptop. I'll be your next producer. I'm like, what? He goes, I promise I'm your guy. And it's just that initiative, and thank God he had the skills, but it's just kind of that, I love my dad. I'm your guy, it's just some bullshit. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. That would be awesome. But uh, I'm your guy, it's just naked pictures of him. Oh. <laughs> Dick pics. All right, well, not my guy, are you? But uh, yeah, he, yeah, he did that, and I just, is the way where in a world where we got all these resumes and they all look good is, is his way of sticking out. Just show that he really cared and he really wanted it. And it's one of the best choices that we've made for the show because he's a monster. Who was it before Brian? Uh, who was it that uh, gave you that ability to just kind of focus, put things behind you? Um, man, I, I just grew, growing up in sports. I guess my dad, my dad's super disciplined. Really, really driven dude, self-made millionaire. Um, hashtag rich. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. I, I think it's, it's just something you might be born with it just through experiences. I don't know what else to do. I really don't. I really don't. I just think um, things are going to happen, and uh, you can only control what you can control. And uh, I'm, I'm going to swing. I'm going to miss. And what are you going to screw Take your ball and go home? I don't know what else to do, man. I wish I could give you guys some sort of advice or something like that, but what the hell else are you going to do? Are you going to quit? Especially if you have kids. Are you fucking kidding me? I have a son. 
There's no way. There's no way. All right, with that, let's give a great big round of applause. For Yeah, yes, sir. Sure. Like I said, if you guys need any more tickets, Please. let us know, man. Cool. Thank you, sir. Stop me, man. Ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Um. Not many men can withstand my punch. Punch. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, for sure. Got a set of got a set of hair on them. Black belts and chick chicken heads. Uh, I think you'd be surprised. I think you'd be surprised. Abbott Kenny Fight Club. Fight Club. Fight Club. Mmm, kids got a piece on them. Piece on them. Couple one, two cutie pies. I still got it, baby. Lift your shield. And now from the Onnit Studios in Playa Vista, California, it is the moment you've been waiting for. The fighter and the kid is coming at you live! No, no, we're not live. That doesn't matter, it sounds better when you say live! <laughs> but we're not live, we don't Shut do it live. Up, man. And now, it's the fighter and the kid live! Not live, this is Shut not live. This is not live. Fan of the fighter and the kid for a while. Actually, turned my brother into yeah, it. He did. When we heard there was a live show, there's no way we were gonna miss it. I've been listening to Fighter and Kid since like 2014. Uh, right after Brendan lost his last fight, um, I think I started listening to the episode after that, and I was hooked because I just listened. He just loved what he does. He's hella passionate. Brian's funny as fuck. It's just, just funny as fuck, man. I just love these guys. I've been listening for like three years now. Yeah! And, and, it's, and it's Shark Eyes Don't Smile. Yeah. What's up, fellas? Hey, buddy, what's up? How are you? What's up, man? We're men. We're men. We're Shark Top Comedy Club going through the. We're just uh, going through what we're, cliff notes. we're gonna do. Yeah, we usually come up with a bullet point of what we're, we're trying to think about. We're not gonna let you see this, though, because we try to keep it as organic as possible. We just have these ideas of where we're gonna go. The we're process. Very improv. Brian almost, because uh, of weather, I was two hours late. He was almost four. He oh, I was almost. This I is also. This is almost my first. I, was, I thought I was gonna have to do my hour special. Yeah. that I'm not ready for at all. Yeah. And we see. thought we were gonna ruin the business. It was bad, man. We were scared. The plane was super. I'm like, like crazy. The plane was like this. All right, you can cut that. <laughs> oh, uh, my boy Brandon and Brian. About to make you shit my pants right now. This is my girlfriend, Melissa. I dragged her over here too. Super pumped for the show. Gotta show off the t-shirt. The fighter and the kid. We laughed all the way down to LA on a road trip. It was a good time. I'm supposed to be on stage. I'm supposed to be on stage, and all I can think about is the chicken fingers that are not here. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. First time? first time for me, second time for him. I saw Biden and the Kid the first time they were here. I gotta say, Brandon Shaw stand up. Yeah, he told me, he's like, he's like, I saw him the first time he was funny, and I'm like, I'm gonna hold him up to par. I wanna see, I wanna see oh. some funny. I know he's been practicing at the comedy store, but I, I knew he'd pull through, and then in true fashion, Shaw came through with the heat, and I, I laughed the whole time. I, I thought I was at the comedy store, I was at, you know, Laugh Factory. It was just, I was impressed and I loved it. Funny is the kid. And then Cal came through with the fucking swing of dick and the whole time I was like, Jesus Christ, all right, home run. I loved it, it was great. It was great. Live show veteran, four live shows, three in SF, one in San Jose. The whole wardrobe yeah. is just shirts the fighter and the kid. The fighter and the kid.
This is like crazy. Thank you, brother. This is a Thank dream. You, man. You see My that? hero's right here, Famous dude. Shit. My hero's right here. One day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Fighter and the Kid. Keep inspiring people, doing your thing. Really, we love it. Thanks. Hey, folks, thank you for coming out. There are two exits. One from the front of the club on the back of the right side of the bar. Once again, there are two exits. One from the front of the club on the back of the right side of the bar. I noticed it being the transition. Hot. Yeah, yeah, we gotta work the transition. Yeah. yeah, we gotta work the transition. Yeah, we Friday, and so far it's one of the best ever. We had the most amazing fans, the most amazing friends, and uh, I can't be more thankful than right now. And thank you, Jobo, Jobers, for recording this. That's it. Awesome, and I was like, yeah, it's not a show. And I was hitting him, and then all of a sudden he started hitting me back. And I was like, oh, that's what happens when you hit people back. Hey, man, I'm just gonna say thank you for coming out. Thank you If you really care about me, please subscribe. Thank you guys. Come on, just subscribe.